With Ash finally departing from the Pokemon anime after 25 years. <laughs> I didn't realize how hard that would be to say. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> With Ash finally leaving the franchise, many fans have started to speculate exactly how his final chapter will play out. On top of that, we've had the new protagonists of the upcoming Scarlet and Violet series revealed to us, supposedly called Rico and Roy. This image has sparked the imagination of the fan base even further, leading many to think that this young lady is in fact Ash's daughter. But how likely is that to be the case? After overcoming my initial skepticism, a vague memory popped up from the back of my mind. A strange recollection of an unaired ending to the original Pokemon movie, where Ash and Misty grew old together and had a daughter. Naturally, I fell into a research hole, and in this video, I will show you the results of that research. And believe me when I tell you, I did not expect to find what I did. My first protocol in these kinds of situations is to check out Dr. Lava's cut content website, because as far as Nintendo historians go, he's easily one of the most in-depth and trustworthy. And I was not disappointed. In a translated blog post, originally written by Takeshi Shudo, the head writer for the first five years of the Pokemon anime, and also the first three movies, he outlines his intent for ending the Pokemon anime with Mewtwo Strikes Back. Perfect! Exactly what I'm looking for, right? Well, not exactly. You see, although Shudo had intended for Ash to grow old at the end of the first movie, it was not to live a happy life with Misty and their child. Instead, I'll just read the quote for you. Months and years pass. Ash grows old. Then, one day suddenly, he looks back on his past. He remembers his childhood fondly. The adventures he had with his amazing Pokemon, the friendship, the coexistence. Maybe Ash wasn't able to experience these things later in life. However, as a kid, there was Pikachu and lots of other Pokemon, Jesse and James, and Mewtwo, and so much more. Elderly Ash remembers everything that happened during his adventures as a young boy. He can hear his mother's voice, go to sleep already. You're setting off on your journey tomorrow. The next morning, he is woken up by his mother. He's a young boy again, leaving his house, excited to start a new adventure. He's going on a journey not to catch Pokemon or become a Pokemon master, but to discover the meaning of existence, to discover how to coexist with others. Pretty heavy concepts for a children's show. But it should be noted that throughout Takeshi Shudo's career, he was regularly under the influence of heavy alcohol and tranquilizers even remarking that he would drink until he was no longer certain that one plus one equal two. An incredible state for anyone to be in and still be able to function, let alone write a children's series that would be enjoyed by and would influence an entire generation. Generally, when it came to his more complex concepts for the show, he would receive pushback from the producers. At the time of writing the first movie, however, the anime showrunners were caught up with the fallout from the Porygon episode. If you don't know what I mean by that, I'm referring to the episode Cyber Soldier Porygon, which led to many Japanese children suffering from epileptic seizures. And as such, the Pokemon anime was in fact taken off the air for four months, and naturally Shudo believed that even if the show were to come back, it couldn't possibly last forever. He was not alone in that thought either, with Ishihara, the CEO of the Pokemon company, also stating that he never thought the anime would last more than six months or a year at most. So with all that in mind, due to his producers being otherwise occupied, when it came to Mewtwo Strikes Back, Takeshi Shudo was given freedoms not usually afforded to him. This can be seen even in the final theatrical release of the first movie, considering that in the first five minutes, Mewtwo kills a whole bunch of scientists. Not to mention the movie's focus around contemplating the meaning of life, existence, and one's own creation, which to this day still stands as some of the most mature themes ever presented in the Pokemon anime. Despite this fact, the ending to the movie Shudo had in mind never came to fruition. It seems though that Shudo's desire to bring the Pokemon series to a satisfying conclusion stayed with him until he eventually left the franchise. In a different blog post, he describes to us an alternate ending he came up with for the show. I thought about writing a fourth movie, but I couldn't come up with any ideas. If I wrote it, I would have used the story that I had planned for the final anime episode. The Pokemon would stage a rebellion, much like Spartacus in ancient Rome. Although at first glance, Pokemon appear to be friends with humans, they would realize they're actually being used like slaves, which would lead to an uprising. Pikachu would become the leader of the revolt and end up fighting with Ash. Team Rocket, who are in possession of lots of sinister Pokemon, including Meowth, who can translate the Pokemon language into human speech, would try to mediate the conflict, but they'd do a poor job of interpreting and only make things worse. That's all I came up with. 
However, an episode like this would break the rules of the Pokemon world and make it impossible for this series to continue. Continuing into perpetuity is the series' objective. If it could ever be produced, I think it would literally have to be the last episode ever. I tried to think of a different plot, but I couldn't. Another fascinating concept for sure, but as Shudo states himself, one that's incompatible with the ongoing Pokemon formula. He tells us that in a meeting he had during the production of the second Pokemon movie, titled in Japan Lugia's Explosive Birth, that even then, the director's expectation for the series was for it to continue for at least 10 more years. That said though, I don't think at the time anyone could truly have fathomed quite how long-lasting this franchise would actually be. None of this, however, explains where I initially heard this rumor that Ash had a daughter at the end of the first movie. That is, until I tracked down a number of articles talking about this exact theory that all seem to reference the same source, the initial teaser trailer for Mewtwo Strikes Back. This trailer contains plenty of footage that either never made it into the final movie, or, as is apparently the case for many teaser trailers for Japanese animated media, seemingly had brand new footage created for it that was never intended to be in the movie itself. In the openings of the teaser, we recognize a familiar face from the movie in Miranda the Harbor Master. She stands alongside a young girl and what appears to be an older Misty. She even shares the same haircut that we have seen Misty have when she lets her hair down in the anime. On top of that, towards the end of the teaser, they seem to both recognize and approach an older Pikachu that we can only assume to be Ash's. So when combined with the fact that Shudo initially wanted to end the film with Ash growing older, and what seems to be video evidence of an older Misty with a daughter heading towards Ash's Pikachu, it only makes sense that somewhere in the production cycle, there was going to be a flash forward in the movie where Ash and Misty were older together and had a daughter, right? Well, as I already pointed out, it's not uncommon for Japanese media to create footage for teasers that are never intended for the final release of the film. For instance, this trailer shows us footage of both Ash surviving an explosion and Team Rocket standing atop a gunship, neither of which appear in the film, with the latter of the two really having no place to appear within the story at all. So if that's the case, why are we shown an older version of Misty with this young girl? Surprisingly enough, despite her appearance, this woman is not Misty. In an interview with director Kunihiko Yuyuma at the US premiere of the first movie's remake, Mewtwo Strikes Back Evolution, it was confirmed that actually was not an adult version of Misty. It was an image of an adult with a child, but I think a lot of people have misinterpreted that. It really was not an adult version of Misty. Oh, of course. How silly of the fan base to think these two identical characters could possibly be the same person. So I followed this whole line of research just to find out that no, Ash never had a daughter, nor, as far as we know, did anyone ever intend to end the series with Ash growing up and having a daughter. That being said, the fact that the fanbase were happy enough to accept that this young girl may in fact be Ash's daughter for so many years does indeed shed some light on why we have taken so strongly to this idea when it comes to Rico. After all, unlike the young girl from the trailer, Rico at least shares Ash's hair color, and as many have pointed out, her hairpin resembles the logo found on Ash's hat in the first series. I suppose my only counter to this argument is that after all this time, after we've watched Ash grow as a character, become champion of Alola, and go on to become the best in the world, what good can come from expanding his story with a legacy character? As I write this, Ash's final series is airing in Japan, titled Aim to be a Pokemon Master. It promises to tie up loose ends and bring an end to this character's journey, which we have followed for over 25 years. In my opinion, having Riko be related to Ash leaves her with the responsibility of living up to that journey. She would either have to surpass her father, which would only leave a vocal portion of the fanbase screaming Mary Sue, or constantly live her life in his shadow, meaning the entire series is her chasing a goal we've already seen Ash achieve. I think Takeshi Shudo said it best himself. Although he passed away before being able to see Ash's story come to an end, he was clear about what a future franchise without Ash in it should look like. Everything I'm writing here now, they're just my own simple thoughts. After three or four years, a new Pokemon adventure with a new main hero should begin. With its own topics, this new Pokemon should adapt to its times. Ten years ago, there was some kid watching Pokemon. 
That kid's tastes will change as he gets older, and someday he'll be an adult, bringing his own children to the cinema. Hopefully, he'll watch Pokemon and consider it a movie fit for adults. That would make me very happy. <laughs>